Today I'm going to be showing you how to crochet the granny ripple stitch. Now this tutorial is going to be broken into two parts. The first part will be showing you how to crochet this granny ripple stitch for if you wanted to use this stitch for any project, be it a scarf, blanket, whatever it is that you fancy having a zigzag chevron granny for. The second part will be showing you how to prep your granny ripple blanket with a border, a two round border, and then information on how I added these little pom-poms to the edge of mine. However, I'm gonna show you how to prep so that you can go on to add any border that you so fancy. So hopefully there is something for everyone in this video. If you're after just the stitch itself, that's the first part. And then if you want a bit more information on preparing and popping a border onto your granny ripple blanket, then that will be the second half of this video. This is quite a hefty video to cover an entire blanket. So sit back, relax, and let's leap straight on in. So to crochet the granny ripple itself, pop a slip knot onto your hook and let's have a quick chat about the pattern multiple. So the pattern multiple for the granny ripple is 24 plus three. Now each one of these up down sections, up down, that is 24 chains it's built over. So each one of these little up and down sections, that's 24, that's 24, that's 24. That's how you have to visualize it when you're doing the chaining because you will have a big long chain that will quickly shrink to become this V shape. So 24 forms your granny chevron section. I'm only going to be making a small sample today. So I'm going to crochet 24 plus 24 plus 24 and then add three chains at the very end. So chain in multiples of 24, I advise maybe doing a small sample like I have first so that you can get a proper gauge of how wide one of these little sections are for if you're planning a blanket. I'm going to go ahead and do three times 24, then add three chains once you have finished chaining your multiples of 24. So once you have chained your multiples of 24, if you haven't already done so, add three chains at the very end. One, two, three. Now to begin the granny ripple, we are going to be working into the sixth chain from the hook. Now this loop on your hook does not count as anything. You only want to count these fully formed chains hanging down below. So count back one, two, three, four, five, six. And then into that sixth chain, we're going to work a granny cluster, which is three double crochets all into the same stitch, or in this case, chain. So I'm going to work three double crochets into the sixth chain from the hook. Now to avoid a great big gapping chain, I advise working into the bottom loop of your chain. Let's go into this bottom one. So you're essentially going into the bottom so you'll have two loops of the chain on top of your hook and one underneath. It's not massively important to do that. I just find it gives you a slightly better finish. So that's one double crochet, two double crochets, and three all worked into that same chain. So you can see it lessens how big the gap, how much that chain spreads by working into the bottom loop of the chain. Now skip two chains, one, two, and into the third, again, working into the bottom loop of this chain, we're going to work three double crochets again. So skip two chains and work three double crochets into that third one. Again, skip two chains and work three double crochets 
into that third chain. One more time, we're going to skip two chains, one, two, and work three double crochets into this third chain. Now this granny ripple pattern is worked in sets of four. When I say four, I mean four sets of these, three double crochets. So we've come up, one, two, three, four, and now we're going to come back down. Now in order to come back down, we need to form a peak up the top. So to do that, chain two, and work three double crochets back into that exact same chain that you just worked the last three. So back into that same chain, work three more double crochets. So we have four sets of three double crochet coming up. We've formed a little peak and now we're going to come back down. So just as before, skip two chains. Now this chain might be a little bit hard to spot. Now we've crammed six stitches into the chain next to it. So just pull your stitches around a little bit Make sure you can clearly identify your chains. So one, two, skip those and work three double crochet into the third. So one, two, and then three. Again, skip two chains and work three double crochet into the next. Now we had four coming up the side, so one, two, three, four. Then we have four coming back down, so one, two, three. Because we need another, let's work number four, we'll skip two chains, and work the fourth set of three double crochets into that third chain. One, two, three, four, going up. One, two, three, four, coming back down. Now, we need to form a dip so we can come back up again. So to form the dip, we're going to skip five chains. One, two, three, four, five, and into the sixth chain, work three double crochet. Skip two chains and work three double crochet. We're coming back up the side again now. So skip two, work three double crochets into that third chain. And just like this side, and just like this side, we're coming back up, we need four sets of three double crochets. We've done two. We need two more, so four coming back up the side. So skip two, work three double crochet into the next chain. Skip two, work three double crochet into the next chain until you have four sets of three double crochet.
So we came up the side, formed a peak, came down the side, formed a valley. We've come up the side. Now we need to start from this point here, form the peak. Then we will come back down the side, form the valley. So this little section from here back up is what we're going to repeat all the way along. So we've come up, we've got four sets of three double crochet. We formed the valley last time. So now we need to form a peak. So to do that, chain two and work three double crochets back into that exact same chain. Now be careful because this one will be covering up that chain, scooch them round. We are going to skip two and work three double crochets into the next. Skip two, three double crochets into the next, skip two and then work three double crochets into the next until we have a total of one, two, three, four sets of three double crochet. Now this first row is always the trickiest, so try not to get too frustrated, just take your time. Four sets of three on the way up, chain two, then four sets coming back down. To form the dip, we skip five chains then come back up the side with four sets of three double crochet and again chain two one, two, three, four sets of three double crochet. Because we just formed a dip, now we form the valley. So skip five and begin again into that sixth chain. So keep repeating this process. You work four up to the top, chain two, four back down the side, skip five, four back up the top, chain two, four back down the side, skip five, four back up the top, chain two, four back down the side, skip five. Keep going like that up, down, up, down. And when you get to the very last set of chains, I can talk you through how we end it when we're over here. So keep going, keep plodding, skip two chains, three double crochet into the next. I promise you from row two onwards, it is plain sailing.
So I'm working my way back down my final little section. I have one, two, three. I know I need four. So let me work my last set of three double crochets. And you'll notice you have a few chains left over. Don't worry, that's intentional. So once you come back down and you have done your final peak and your final set of four double crochets to end this row, we're going to work one double crochet into the very last chain. You should have three chains remaining. So skip two and into this very last chain, we're going to work one double crochet on its own, just into the chain. Then you can breathe a sigh of relief. Just take a moment to lay it out and make sure you're going up, down, up, down, up, down. And now we can begin row two, which is vastly easier. Okay, for row two, row two is the pattern repeat row and the row that you will work for the entirety of your granny ripple project. I will show you how to change color at the end of this row, but changing color is completely optional. So for row two, we're going to chain three and turn your work. Now skip this very first gap. You'll have a noticeable gap between your last two stitches. We're going to ignore that entirely and we're going to move over to the gaps in between your sets of three double crochets. So skip this first gap and work into this second one. And into this second gap here, we're going to work three double crochet stitches. So ignore that first space and just work three double crochet stitches in between your sets of three from the row below. So that's one, two, and three. Again, in between your sets of three double crochets from the row below, work three double crochet. How much easier is this row compared to the one that you just did? <laughs> There's no counting of chains. We're just working into the gap in between stitches. Again, move over to your next set of three double crochet stitches and work three double crochets in between them. Then you're going to be at your chain two space. So the chain two space, which is your peak. Into this chain two space, we're going to form a new peak. So work three double crochets into that chain two space. You'll notice you have one, two, three, four sets three double crochet just as you did in the row below and we're in a peak so we're going to form a new peak chain two and work three double crochets back into that same chain two space right back into where you just worked your last three so you're forming a peak on top of the peak from the row below one two three four up chain two to form your peak. And now we're going to work one, two, three, four, back down. So into your spaces in between your sets of three double crochets from the row below, one, two, three, you can see my blue table shining through those gaps. Into each one of those three, we're going to work three double crochet stitches. Just as you did on the way up, we're now coming back down. So three double crochets in between your sets of three double crochets from the row below. One, 
two, three, and we need four. All these sides are formed with four sets of three double crochets. One, two, three, four. So we've come up, formed a peak. We're coming back down and now we're at the valley. Now the valley is super duper easy. We're going to skip this space and we're just going to immediately identify the three spaces in between your sets of three double crochets from the row below. If I stretch it out a little bit, I'm going to skip this one. See there's quite a big gap there, skip it. And we're going to work into the next three gaps. So to bridge across the valley, we're just going to work into the next chain space in between these and we're going to skip this big one. So you're essentially skipping all six stitches and we're just going to leap straight over to the other side, ignore all of this and work three double crochets into the next space. So you're skipping this valley section entirely. And just as before, now we're coming back up. We're going to work one, two, three double crochets up the side until you have four sets of three double crochet. That fourth set will end in the chain two space from the row below. So we have one, work into the next space. two, that's three, and then for our fourth set it will be in the chain two space of the peak from the row below. Then, just as on the row below, you've ended in a peak, you've come up the side and you've ended in a peak. Now we need to form a new peak on top of the peak. So chain two and work three double crochets back into that same spot. Then work three more sets of three double crochets down the side. Then when you reach the valley, skip the valley entirely and just work four on the way back up. You'll know you're on track if you always end coming back up in the chain two space. So you're ending back in the peak again. So when you're in a peak, form a new one by chaining two and working three double crochets back into that same spot. That is your first of the four sets of three double crochets that you need to do. So you've done one, let's work three more down the side. Once you have come down the side and you have one, two, three, four, you'll be at the valley skip the valley section, so skip two clusters and leap straight into working back up the other side. So ignore this bit, skip over it. The more rows you do, the more easily you'll be able to identify these bits to skip. So we've skipped that section and we're coming back up. Keep going until the end of this row.
So I'm coming down my final side here. So I've created my last peak and you'll be traveling down the side. So I have one, two, three. I need one more set of three double crochets. When you reach the end here, there will be a chain space right at the very end. Now, to finish this row, you're going to work a double crochet into this chain space, just one double crochet on its own. Now, I'm also going to change color, so I'll show you how I do that. So we're just going to go ahead and begin our double crochet just straight into that space. And then, when I have just one more yarn over left to complete the stitch, I'm going to stop. I'm going to cut my old color, leaving a nice long tail for weaving in later. And I'm going to bring in my new color. Again, leaving a long tail, I'm going to drape that over my hook and pull it through those last two loops to complete the stitch. And from this point on, we're simply going to be repeating that very last row we did. I will do a super quick recap with you. To begin, chain three and turn your work. Skip this very first space at the beginning of the row and leap immediately to the space in between your sets of three double crochets. And into that space, you're going to work three double crochets. So skip this end section entirely and leap straight in to three double crochets. Then, just as before, you're going to work three double crochets all the way up to your peak. That will be four sets in total. Your fourth set will end in the chain two space of the peak. You want to form a new peak, so chain two, three double crochet back into that same spot. And that marks the start of the descent down to the valley. Now again, you want four sets of three double crochets. This one counts as your first one, so work three more down the side. This will bring you to the valley, so we're going to skip two of these clusters. One, two, these sets of three double crochets and leap straight into this side section over here. Skip this next little section entirely and begin straight away working up the side. This brings you up to the top of your peak where you begin again. Chain two, three double crochet back into that same spot and then in three more spaces down the side. Skip the valley, fall back up. Repeat this, back and forth, up and down until you get to the very end. Once you reach the end of the row, you'll have your little gap right at the very end. And you're going to end with a double crochet just straight into that turning chain space at the end. Now you would repeat this back and forth until your project is the length that you want it to be. 
if you have reached the end and this is your very final stitch then to finish off you're going to chain one you would cut your yarn leaving a long tail to weave in pull that through out and tight weave in your ends and your project is complete if you were only here for this actual granny ripple section of the tutorial and you're you're not making a blanket you have no interest in the border then thank you very much for watching i hope this tutorial helped you out and you can go on to make granny ripple projects of your own for everyone else that's still here i'm assuming we are ready for border time so buckle up get more stitching to come <laughs> So I've crocheted a couple more rows to my small sample and now I'm going to show you how I did the border around my full size blanket. Now massive disclaimer before we start. I am always hesitant to give exact stitch counts when doing a border. This is because sometimes you can skip a stitch without realizing and then it throws you off completely and you panic that you don't have the same amount of stitches that I do. For this border, it's very forgiving. If you don't have the exact stitch count that I have, don't worry, don't worry. One or two stitches off are not going to massively affect the border for this blanket just wanted to get that out of the way so you aren't panicking if I say I've got 13 stitches and you've only got 12 or you've got 15 don't worry so with your blanket facing you you're going to join your yarn to the very first stitch that you have now for me it's my turning chain for you it might be the top of a double crochet it really doesn't matter we're just going to join our yarn to the top of whichever stitch is facing you. Now I'm going to join with a standing half double crochet. If you prefer to just join your yarn more traditionally and then chain two, that's also fine. But for the standing half double crochet, pop a slip knot onto your hook, wrap your yarn around your hook and just put your finger on it so that extra yarn over doesn't come off. Now into the top, of the stitch, put your hook, yarn over at the back, keeping your finger on those two loops that are already on your hook, draw it through. You'll have three loops, you can let go now, three loops, yarn over and draw through all three of those loops. That is a standing half double crochet. Now you're going to half double crochet in the next 12 stitches up to the peak. Now, as I said, please don't stress about stitch counts. Just half double crochet into the top of every stitch until you reach the chain two peak. Once you reach your chain two peak into that chain two space, we're going to work two half double crochets. That's one and two. Then chain two and work two more half double crochets back into that same chain two space. Now half double crochet into the next 10 stitches or if it's easier for you to spot work into the top next three sets of double crochet stitches from the row below so that would be nine so that's my first set my second set
my third set that's nine stitches and then on this very final set before the valley work one half double crochet into the first of those three stitches then stop Now we're going to work a half double crochet, two together. So yarn over, go into the next stitch, draw up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook, stop. Yarn over again, go into the next stitch, draw up a loop and stop. You'll have five loops on your hook. Yarn over and draw through all five loops to bring those two half finished double crochet stitches together. We're going to repeat that into the next two stitches. So yarn over, go into the stitch, draw up a loop, stop, begin again. Yarn over, go into the next stitch, draw up a loop, five loops on your hook, yarn over and draw through all five loops. We are just slightly bringing this valley together. Just makes it a little bit neater. Then half double crochet in every stitch back up to the peak. You should have 10 stitches, but please don't worry if you don't, it really doesn't matter. As long as your two half double crochet two togethers are sitting over the valley, that's all you need to worry about. Once you get to the peak, two half double crochets, chain two, and two more half double crochets into that same spot. Then we're going to work this section again. Half double crochet in the next 10 stitches. Over the valley, you want two half double crochet two togethers, and then come back up to the top and form the peak with two half doubles chain two, two half doubles. Repeat this up and down. Once you reach your final side, just half double crochet all the way down into every stitch. Once your top side is complete, just take a moment to note down the stitch counts of two particular areas. The first area you want to count your stitches, it will be the start, this first start, and this last section here. You want to count how many stitches you have before your chain two space. For me, it's 15. Note that down. Now the other bit you want to count is how many stitches you have from your chain two down to the valley to just one of these half double crochet two together stitches. That two stitch there counts as one. So you want to count that section too. Thirteen. I have 13 stitches on each side on these in-between bits of my blanket. So I know I've got 15 stitches here, 13, 13, 13, 13, 15. The only reason you want to note that down is because when we come to this bottom section down here, we're going to want to mirror the same amount of stitches. So we're going to want 15 stitches here and then 13, 13, 13, 13, and 15 stitches on this side. That just means that you will have the same amount of stitches, top and bottom, for whatever border you want to go on to put onto your blanket. All right, 
all that technicalities out of the way. For the side sections, chain one and pop a half double crochet back into that exact same stitch that you just crocheted into. That forms a little corner. If you want to mark that with a stitch marker, you can, that's totally optional. Then we're going to work our way down the sides. Now this is the nice easy part. We're going to work two half double crochets into each side space down the side. So just working into that space, one, two. Into the next space, one, two. Keep going all the way down into the edge of each row. I really should have woven my tails in, but where's the fun in that, hey? I'll just keep crocheting over them. Into the end of each row, two half double crochets. Nice and simple. When you get to the very last row, two half doubles into that end space. And that is your side section complete. Now we're going to work the bottom section. And again, as I mentioned, note your stitches. If you also have 15 and 13 like I do, Great, follow exactly what I'm about to do. If you haven't, don't be afraid to slightly alter how many stitches you're putting and where. As long as these counts match, that's all that matters. So working into the underside bottom of your blanket, into the bottom of the stitch. Now it'll either be the bottom of the stitch or into the turning chain, that gap there into the bottom of that turning chain, you're going to work one half double crochet chain one and one more half double crochet back into that same stitch. Now this one that you're doing right now is the start of whatever count it is that we now have to make me it's 15 so I have one I've got 14 more stitches I have to make before I hit this bottom valley section so for me this was the sequence two half double crochets into this chain space one half double into the bottom that same chain as your double crochets. So into that same chain there. It's into the bottom of that sort of granny cluster. So now I have one, two, three, four stitches already. Three half double crochets into the next chain space. One into the bottom of the granny. The granny cluster, that didn't sound very pleasant, did it? Into the bottom of the granny. Repeat that again. Three half doubles into the next chain space. One into the bottom of your cluster. So I now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve stitches. I need three more to get to my count of 15. So for those, I'm going to work two half double crochets into the next chain space. And then I am going to work a half double crochet two together, but I'm going to start it on one side of the valley and end it on the next. So I'm going to start it here. I've got three loops on my hook and I'm going to end it on the other side of my valley. Like so. So this stitch count now matches this stitch count. Now I know for the rest, until I get to the final edge on the other side, I need 13 stitches. You'll need 
however many is in between here. It gets confusing. This is why I really didn't want to give exact stitch counts because I don't want you stressing about the numbers. Honestly, just as long as it's it's even, you're golden. So into this same chain space where you just ended your half double crochet two together, work two half doubles. One into that same chain as the granny cluster. Three half doubles into the next chain space. One into the bottom, into that chain. Three into the next chain space. All half double crochets. And one into the same chain as your granny stitches. Now excluding those stitches coming down, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I need thirteen. So to end into this big chain five skipped space from your very first row, we're going to work two half double crochets. which brings the count to 13 stitches, then chain two, work two half double crochets back into that same spot. So we're essentially now forming a peak in the valley of the bottom of your blanket. <laughs> so coming back down for these middle sections, where you've got your count of 13 or whatever your count is. We've already got two of those stitches. So half double crochet into the bottom chain of the same place where you worked your stitches. Then three half doubles into the next chain space. One, two, three. One into the same chain as your previous stitches. Three into the next chain space. one into the same chain as your stitches. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Editing Robin here. I've just spotted whilst editing this that I have added one stitch too many. So for this very next section, when I tell you to add two half doubles, just add one. This just shows why stitch counts, honestly, don't stress about them because here I am in the video stressing about making sure I'm giving you the correct stitch counts and accidentally giving you the wrong ones. So apologies for that and back to the video. Then two half doubles into the chain space just before the valley. And then just as before, half double crochet two together, starting on one side of the valley, ending on the next to get your count of 13. So you're going to repeat this section from over here, coming up and down, up and down until you reach your final edge. So start again from the point after your double crochet two together. So that's two half doubles into this back into that same space, work your way up and then repeat back down. So I'm on my very final edge back up to the top and I need that count of 15. So coming back up the side, this final side, just as before, I'm going to work two half doubles. One into the bottom chain of where your stitches are, then working three half doubles into the chain space followed by one into the same chain as your stitches. Once 
Once you reach this very end corner space, we're going to work three half double crochets into this space, be it your turning space or the space in between your last two actual stitches. And then to end, we're going to find roughly the, if you're working into the turning chain, the third chain of those turning chains or the bottom of your double crochet stitch. And in there, we're going to work one half double crochet. You don't need to be too precise, just eyeball it, sort of shove it in somewhere around the third. One, two, three. Oh, I'm going into the fourth round about there. which should bring your stitch count to 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. All right, the hard work is over. <laughs> so coming back up this final side, you want to chain one and work a half double crochet back into the exact same spot where you placed the last one. And again, if you want to pop a stitch marker into that chain one, you absolutely can. And then coming back up the side, we're going to work two half double crochets into every end of each row. So two half doubles all the way back up. Once you've worked your final two half doubles into the end of that end row, to finish, work a half double crochet into the very same stitch that you started in. Chain one and slip stitch to join to the top of either your chain two or your standing half double crochet here. That's the first round done. Now, if you want to leave it at this, you absolutely can. You're now prepped to either have this be a nice skinny border or to put on whatever border you fancy. If you want a second row, let's cover that now. We're not going to talk about stitch counts quite so much for this second round, purely because we now know we have the same amount of stitches, top and bottom, the hard work's done. So it's less important. You just want everything to be even. So for the second round of your border, just to make it a bit more substantial, you're going to begin with a chain two, which counts as a half double crochet, and then half double crochet in every single stitch all the way up to your chain two space. Now in your chain two space, we're going to work two half double crochets, chain one, and two more half double crochets in there. So that's how we'll deal with the peaks of every peak, including the new peaks that we crocheted on the bottom. Your peaks are two half double crochets, chain one, two half double crochets. Now put it down for a second and just pay attention to where we did these half double crochet two togethers. Now I can very clearly see here, I've got three clear spots which cover this bottom valley. Keep an eye on those. We're going to work one stitch over all three. So you want to half double crochet in every stitch coming down and then just stop when you reach these bottom ones. As I say, stitch counts less important. If you want a real stitch count, I did go on to half double crochet in the next 11 stitches. But as I say, don't get hung up on that if you haven't got 11. It's very easy when we're doing the second round of half doubles to not know whether you're going in that very first one or the next one. So just eyeball it 
These are the stitches we want to be going over in a moment. So crochet down to this point here. So I've crocheted in 11, but doesn't matter if you haven't, you just want to get to this point where you can clearly see the valley, the three stitch holes, if you like, of where the valley is. And over these three stitches, we are going to work a half double crochet three together. So yarn over, go under the next stitch, drop a loop. Yarn over, go into the next stitch, drop a loop. Yarn over and go into the next stitch and draw up a loop. You will have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven loops on your hook. Yarn over and draw through all seven of those loops. Then half double crochet all the way back up to the peak. So repeat this section up and down for as long as you have peaks and valleys. Your peak is two half double crochet, chain one, two half double crochet, and your valley is a half double crochet, three together, worked over the three rough-ish stitches of where your valley is. Gives it a nice, sturdy platform for whatever you go on to do with this blanket. So keep doing that, and I'll meet you over here on your end corner. So I am approaching the very last stitch of my top edge and then I have my chain one space. I'm going to end with a half double crochet into that space and that's your top edge complete. Done. We're nearly there. For the sides, they're nice and simple. You're going to chain one and half double crochet back into that chain one space to form a little corner and then half double crochet in each of your stitches down the side. Easy peasy, don't worry about counting them. Just shove those stitches in there. Again, once you reach this corner space, we're going to work one half double crochet, chain one and another half double crochet back into that spot to turn the corner. Now, just as before, we're going to kind of eyeball it. You want to look for sort of three stitches. It's a bit trickier. This one was quite easy on the top to eyeball them. Here, sort of you want to be aiming for these three stitches here, you want over the valley to have a half double crochet three together, just as you did on this side. Eyeball it is my best advice. It gets a bit tight in here, so you can either do it over these three stitches or these three stitches. It doesn't really matter. Just vaguely aim, <laughs> so technical, for covering three of these stitches. All right, I'm approaching this bottom valley section. So you can see I've come down and now it's really personal preference which stitches you work over. It's not gonna make a blind bit of difference if I put a half double here and work my three together over the next three stitches or if I did it one stitch early. 
really don't stress it and then continue I'll do a couple more and I'll show you how it really doesn't matter <laughs> there we go could you tell the difference if I had switched that over one more stitch across or the other way no no you can't so don't stress it just whack it in over the valley and just as you did before continue that all the way along in the peaks you want two half double crochets one chain two half doubles and then for the valleys you want to do that half double crochet three together roughly over three stitches around the valley section there is nothing worse than panicking about stitch counts so breathe it doesn't matter no one's going to notice half double crochet is super forgiving as a stitch anyway it creates a nice sturdy border the whole point of this border is just to give a bit of rigidity to the granny ripple and to really make that ripple shine no one is going to be investigating where you put a half double crochet three together once your whole blanket is complete all right keep going meet me when you're on your final corner all right i'm at my last corner i'm going to end with a half double crochet into that chain one space chain one and half double crochet back into that same space bottom done top done one side done just one more side to go so rotate your work and place a half double crochet in every stitch up the side again pop them where it feels natural if your sides are pulling in too much you might have missed a stitch and you might want to pop an extra stitch in if they're ruffling you may be putting in too many stitches you just want it to sort of lie flat naturally without doing too much so just without overly worrying just shove those stitches in <laughs> i think we're all tired by this point i mean kudos to you you've just finished making an entire blanket to be watching this video at this stage okay i am at the very final point of my blanket now i have this chain one space here or this sort of chain space where we slip stitched we've got the chain one space down here pop a half double crochet into that space if there is an obvious space if there isn't don't worry chain one and then slip stitch to the top of that chain two that you started with give yourself a massive pat on the back that was quite an achievement you have gone around your granny ripple blanket twice and you have a nice base to add anything else that you would like to it now a couple of suggestions from me one leave it like this it's nice and plain your corners are all finished off nicely call it complete at this stage suggestion number two great big fat pom-poms or tassels would look amazing added at these peak sections and on the corner edges of your blanket i very very nearly did that for my blanket make some massive pom-poms or tassels that would look really fun another suggestion is to do what i did now for my blanket i crocheted this fun bobble edge border now as much as i have been saying from round two of this border that stitch counts really just go with it relax these were even more eyeballed <laughs> than anything else so to begin before i began this third round i counted back from this chain space how many stitches i had and where I wanted the bobbles to lie. So I did a little bit of working out before I leapt straight into creating these bobbles. Let me get to that. Oh, my blanket's upside down. Hold on, technical hitch. So this is the point at which you have just finished your blanket here. So what I did was I came up to the chain one space and I went, well, I want a bobble in my peak up here. How many bobbles do I want coming down the side? 
and therefore how many stitches have I got to work with. So my bobbles along the side of my blanket, I have a video showing you how to do this little bobble edge border on this exact blanket which has popped up on screen or is down in the comment section down below. But just for a bit of maths for you if you wanted it, on the sides, the long sides of my granny ripple, I had my bobble border with five slip stitches in between them. So five slip stitches in between the ones down, running down the side. And on these chevron edges here, I think I had them as in between here, four slip stitches in between them. And because I wanted one in the valley, I think there was six slip stitches on this side and, and five on that side. My best advice, eyeball it. This border's great, this little bobble border. It's really fun and you can totally customise it. So if you want your bobbles closer together or further apart, it's just a case of a slip stitch or two. So it's quite simple to just eyeball it with less worry about the maths. But that's how I finished my blanket. How you finish yours is entirely optional. So congratulations through making it all the way to the end of a video which feels like it's taken me 17 years to film. <laughs> <laughs> we've been here a while we've spent a lot of time together today be it in bit parts or all in one go so I'd like to thank you for watching to the very end I really hope you go on to make amazing granny ripple blankets of your own and if you found this tutorial helpful please do give it a big thumbs up because that's a great way to let me know that you don't mind me rambling at you for however long this video is. It's got to be an hour plus by the time it's edited. Who knows? Anyway, I'm off for a much needed cup of tea and I will see you again really soon. Happy crocheting. Bye.